The galaxy had grown accustomed to viewing humanity as little more than a minor player in the vast cosmic stage. They were a species that had struggled to expand beyond their small corner of space, their technology seen as rudimentary compared to the highly advanced weapons and starships of the alien coalitions. Humanity had no grand alliances, no galaxy-spanning empire, and to the larger powers, they were nothing more than an afterthought, primitive, weak, and easy to mock. Among these alien powers, the coalition known as the Zathran Confederacy was particularly vocal in their derision of humanity's military. They had fought countless wars against various species, always emerging victorious with their sleek, efficient fleets and state-of-the-art weaponry. Their technological superiority was the stuff of legend, and their pride knew no bounds. So, when they encountered a small human fleet during a routine patrol on the outskirts of Zathran space, the response was predictable. Laughter echoed through the Zathran ranks as they studied the human warship leading the fleet. To them, it looked old, outdated, a relic from a past era when humans were still tinkering with basic propulsion systems while the rest of the galaxy had long since mastered faster-than-light travel. The Zathrans didn't see a warship. They saw a joke. The ship's blocky, angular design seemed almost amateurish compared to the sleek, curved vessels of the Zathran fleet. Its weapon systems, from what the Zathran scanners could detect, appeared laughably weak. Word quickly spread through the ranks of the Confederacy. The human fleet, led by this useless warship, had ventured too close to Zathran space, perhaps in some misguided show of force or an attempt at exploration. Whatever the humans' intentions, it didn't matter. The Zathran commanders saw this as an opportunity to flex their military muscle and make an example out of humanity. They brought that into battle? One Zathran officer sneered, broadcasting his message across the entire fleet. We'll tear it apart in minutes. They won't even know what hit them. Across the galaxy, Zathran propaganda networks picked up on the encounter, broadcasting footage of the human ship with derisive commentary. The image of the useless, human warship, set against the gleaming, cutting-edge Zathran fleet, became a symbol of the Confederacy's supposed dominance. Alien species who had once considered humans a mild curiosity now saw them as fools. Mockery spread like wildfire, with news anchors, commentators, and even artists joining in the fun. Memes and cartoons of the outdated human warship began circulating, all driving home the same point. Humanity was no threat. The Zathran commanders, eager to prove their superiority and shut down any human attempt to challenge their borders, ordered their fleet to move in. The goal was simple, wipe out the human fleet, but more specifically, make a spectacle of destroying that useless warship. They planned to use it as a symbol of human inadequacy, a reminder to the galaxy that the Zathran Confederacy stood unchallenged. The human warship, silent and unmoving, didn't respond to the Zathran broadcasts. Its weapons remained inactive, its shields appearing uncharged. The Zathrans took this as confirmation of the ship's ineptitude, assuming the humans were either paralyzed with fear or didn't even have the technology to respond properly. The Zathran fleet moved closer, confident that they were about to claim an effortless victory. In their minds, it was only a matter of time before the human ship was reduced to debris. But what the Zathrans didn't know, what they couldn't possibly understand, was that humanity had a strategy. The human warship wasn't weak. It wasn't outdated. It wasn't useless. The ship had been designed this way on purpose. Its blocky exterior, its seemingly antiquated systems, and its minimal response to the Zathran approach were all part of a carefully crafted ruse. Humanity had learned long ago that being underestimated was their greatest advantage. Behind the ship's unassuming facade lay some of the most advanced technology humanity had ever developed. It wasn't flashy. It didn't need to be. The ship's photon-based weapons, invisible to the Zathran scanners, were unlike anything the galaxy had seen before. Its shields, though appearing inactive, were part of an experimental system that could absorb and convert incoming energy into offensive power. The Zathrans, in all their arrogance, had no idea what they were walking into. As the Zathran fleet closed in, their ships began to form attack formations, encircling the human warship with precision. 
They wanted to make sure there was no escape. The plan was to strike hard and fast, obliterate the human ship in one swift assault, and send a clear message to anyone else who might think about challenging the Confederacy. The countdown to the attack began. Zathran officers, confident in their victory, exchanged smug comments over the comms, laughing about how quickly the battle would be over. From the bridge of the Zathran flagship, their admiral watched, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. His fingers hovered over the controls, ready to unleash the full might of the Zathran fleet. But just as the Zathran ships were about to fire, something changed. The human warship, which had remained still and unresponsive up until this point, suddenly activated. The ship's shields, once invisible, flared to life in a burst of photon energy, enveloping the vessel in a protective barrier that shimmered with power. The Zathrans hesitated, confused by the sudden change. Without warning, the human ship fired its first volley. It wasn't the weak, sputtering barrage the Zathrans had expected. Instead, the warship unleashed a concentrated beam of photon energy, cutting through the closest Zathran ship as if it were made of paper. The Zathran vessel exploded, debris scattering across the battlefield, while the human warship continued its assault. The Zathran fleet, caught off guard, scrambled to react. They fired back, their advanced weaponry lighting up the space around them, but it was too late. The human warship's shields absorbed the incoming fire converting it into raw energy that fueled its photon cannons. Each time the Zathrans fired, they unknowingly strengthened their enemy. Panic spread through the Zathran ranks. Their weapons, once thought unstoppable, were useless against the human warship's defenses. Ship after ship fell to the warship's photon blasts, each one vaporized in moments. The Zathran commanders, realizing too late that they had underestimated their opponent, desperately tried to regroup but the damage was done. The human warship, once mocked as useless, was systematically dismantling the entire Zathran fleet. As the battle raged on, the Zathran forces found themselves facing a harsh truth. Their overconfidence had blinded them to the reality of the situation. They had mocked what they didn't understand, and now they were paying the price. The human warship, far from being outdated, was a masterpiece of military engineering one that had been designed specifically to lure enemies into a false sense of superiority before striking back with overwhelming force. The Zathran commanders, humiliated and desperate, attempted to retreat, but the human warship wouldn't allow it. It pursued them relentlessly, its photon cannons firing with deadly precision. One by one, the once proud Zathran ships were reduced to nothing more than debris, floating helplessly in the void. By the time the battle ended, the Zathran fleet had been utterly destroyed. The human warship, the one they had mocked so openly, had vaporized them. Word of the battle spread quickly across the galaxy. Other alien species, who had watched the Zathran Confederacy's mockery of humanity with amusement, were now rethinking their stance. The footage of the battle, captured by both human and Zathran sensors, circulated through the intergalactic networks, and the reaction was immediate. The galaxy had seen the power of humanity's worship, and it was a wake-up call. For years, humanity had been dismissed, their technology mocked, their capabilities ridiculed. But now, after this battle, the galaxy would never see them the same way again. The human worship, once thought useless, had vaporized one of the most powerful fleets in the galaxy with ease. The Zathrans had learned the hard way that mocking humanity was a mistake a mistake they wouldn't be able to recover from any time soon. As the human warship powered down its weapons, its mission complete, it sent a single, simple message across the stars, never underestimate humanity. The galaxy, now fully aware of what humanity was capable of, would have to think twice before making that mistake again. The Zathran Confederacy had learned that lesson at the cost of their fleet. And for the rest of the galaxy, the warning was clear, Mock humanity at your own peril. The Zathran Confederacy had vastly underestimated the situation. As their once proud fleet crumbled under the assault of the human warship, panic turned into desperation. The initial strike had caught them off guard, but now they were trying to regroup, determined to take down what they still considered to be a human anomaly. Surely, they thought, this ship was a fluke, a one-time trick that they hadn't anticipated. 
the rest of their fleet, though diminished, could still mount an effective counterattack. Zathrin commanders barked orders, directing the remaining ships into tighter formations. Their tactical systems were scanning the human vessel frantically, searching for any potential weaknesses, any possible way to penetrate its defenses. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Every time their advanced weaponry struck the human ship, it seemed to grow stronger. The shields glowed with an eerie photon energy, pulsating as they absorbed the incoming fire. It was as though the Zathrin's attacks were feeding the human warship, making it more powerful with each volley. But the Zathrin fleet was not used to retreating. For centuries, they had been a dominant force, conquering and intimidating lesser species across the galaxy. Their ships were designed for offense, their weapons systems engineered to overwhelm and annihilate any opposition. In their arrogance, they had never considered that they might face an enemy capable of turning their strength against them. Now, faced with this seemingly useless human warship that was proving to be anything but, they doubled down on their efforts to bring it down. The second wave of the Zathrin assault began, with more coordinated precision. Their ships fanned out in a multi pronged attack formation, each wing aiming to overwhelm different sections of the human warship's defenses. From all angles, they opened fire, launching a barrage of missiles, plasma beams, and laser cannons designed to tear through any known shielding technology. In their minds, the sheer volume of firepower would be enough to overwhelm the ship, no matter how advanced its systems might be. The human warship didn't flinch. Its shields, still glowing with absorbed energy, shifted in response to the incoming fire, redirecting the energy with near-perfect efficiency. The Zathrins watched in disbelief as their missiles detonated harmlessly against the shield barrier, their plasma beams refracted and dispersed, and their lasers dissipated before they even touched the hull. Every tactic, every maneuver they had used in previous battles was utterly ineffective. This was a defense they had never encountered before, a level of technology that exceeded even their most advanced designs. As the Zathrin forces struggled to find a way through, the human warship countered with brutal precision. Its photon cannons, now fully charged from absorbing the Zathrin fire, unleashed devastating beams of energy, targeting the most vulnerable ships in the enemy fleet. The blasts were quick, direct, and unrelenting. Each shot connected with deadly accuracy, tearing through shields and armor as if they didn't exist. Ships that had withstood countless battles in the past were vaporized in seconds the Zathan fleet began to fall apart. Ship after ship disintegrated under the onslaught, their debris scattered across the battlefield. The human warship moved with calculated intent, eliminating threats with a level of precision that defied the Zathran's understanding. Every time they attempted a new formation or a different approach, the human ship adapted instantly, always one step ahead of their strategies. What had once seemed like a guaranteed victory was now spiraling into a catastrophic defeat. In the midst of the chaos, the Zathran commanders were faced with an undeniable truth. They had misjudged humanity. This wasn't the primitive, inferior species they had believed them to be. Humanity had evolved. Their technology, once mocked and ridiculed, had surpassed anything the Zathrans had anticipated. The warship they had laughed at, the one they had assumed was a relic from a bygone era, was now dismantling their fleet with terrifying ease. Desperation turned into full-blown panic. Zathan ships began to break formation, their captains attempting to flee from the battlefield. But there was no escape. The human warship, still absorbing and converting energy, moved with relentless speed, targeting the fleeing vessels with pinpoint accuracy. Photon beams lanced through the darkness, striking ships before they could activate their warp drives. Explosions lit up the void, marking the destruction of some of the most powerful ships in the Zathran Confederacy. The Zathran commanders, realizing they had no hope of victory, issued a general retreat order. Their once great fleet, reduced to a fraction of its original size, began to scatter in all directions, each ship trying to escape the carnage. But the human warship wasn't finished. It pursued the retreating ships with relentless focus, systematically picking them off one by one. There would be no mercy, no quarter. The Zathrans had mocked humanity, and now they were paying the price for their arrogance. In the command center of the Zathran flagship, 
Their admiral stared at the tactical screens in disbelief. How had it come to this? How had their state-of-the-art fleet been so utterly destroyed by a single human warship? His pride, his confidence in Zathran's superiority, had been shattered. All he could do now was try to save the few ships that remained. But as he gave the order to retreat, he knew it was too late. The human warship had already targeted his ship, and in moments, it would be over. The flagship, once the pride of the Zathran fleet, was vaporized in an instant, its wreckage scattered across the battlefield like so many others. The human warship, now the sole force in the sector, stood victorious. The Zathran Confederacy, which had mocked and ridiculed humanity for so long, had been utterly defeated. Their fleet, once the terror of the galaxy, was nothing more than debris, a reminder of their failure to recognize the true power of their opponent. The few surviving Zathan ships, those lucky enough to have escaped the human warship's wrath, fled back to their home systems, their tails between their legs. The message was clear, humanity was not to be underestimated. What had once seemed like a species destined to remain at the bottom of the galactic order had proven itself to be far more dangerous than anyone had imagined. The Zathran Confederacy had never experienced humiliation like this before. For centuries, they had dominated the galaxy with their cutting-edge technology, unmatched fleets, and strategic prowess. The notion that they could be bested by a human ship was beyond their comprehension. Yet, the reality was now undeniable. What they had dismissed as a useless relic of human engineering had vaporized their forces, leaving nothing but wreckage in its wake. As news of the battle spread, the remaining Zathran leadership scrambled to make sense of the defeat. Their pride had been shattered, but their survival instincts kicked in. They had to mount a counteroffensive. Despite the losses they had suffered, the Confederacy still had fleets stationed in nearby sectors, and they were determined to salvage their reputation. Reports from surviving Zathan ships described the human warship as a monstrous anomaly, a freak occurrence that surely couldn't be replicated across humanity's entire military. The Confederacy's high command quickly mobilized their remaining forces. This time, they would not rely on arrogance. They would bring overwhelming firepower, surrounding the human fleet and crushing it with superior numbers. The plan was simple, overwhelm the humans before they could unleash the full potential of their mysterious warship again. Zathran ships were called in from multiple sectors, and soon, a second fleet was prepared, larger, more cautious and far more determined to erase the embarrassment of their previous defeat. They made their move swiftly, sending a massive armada to intercept the human forces before they could retreat. The Zathrans had no intention of letting humanity escape with a victory. Their new strategy focused on coordinated attacks from all sides, using long-range weaponry to weaken the human defenses from a distance before moving in for the kill. It was a battle plan designed to outlast even the most formidable defenses. But as the Zathran fleet closed in on the human warship once again, they failed to understand one crucial aspect of the human strategy. Humanity hadn't designed its ships merely to withstand a conventional attack. They had anticipated being outnumbered and had developed their technology accordingly. The photon cannons, advanced shields, and energy-absorbing capabilities of the human warship were not just flukes. They were the product of centuries of refinement, designed specifically to face enemies who would rely on overwhelming numbers. As the Zathran forces surrounded the human ship, their long-range weaponry opened fire in perfect coordination. Missiles, energy beams, and railgun rounds filled the void of space, converging on the human warship from all directions. The Zathrans were determined to give no room for retaliation, no opportunity for the humans to regroup. For a moment, it seemed as if the sheer volume of firepower might succeed. The human ship was engulfed in a storm of explosions, energy bursts rippling across its shields. But as the Zathrans intensified their assault, something shifted. The human warship's shields, once again shimmering with photon energy, absorbed the incoming fire, converting it into raw power for its offensive systems. It was the same strategy that had devastated the first Zathran fleet, and now, they were falling into the same trap. Without hesitation, the human ship retaliated. Photon beams shot out in all directions, cutting through the Zathran forces with surgical precision. 
entire squadrons were vaporized in seconds, their shields and hulls no match for the focused energy blasts. The Zathran fleet, despite its larger numbers and more cautious approach, found itself in the same position as before, outmatched by a ship they had once ridiculed. The human warship moved with terrifying speed and accuracy, targeting key Zathran vessels, neutralizing command ships and communication hubs. Every attempt by the Zathrans to regroup was met with destruction. Their strategy of surrounding the human fleet backfired as the ship turned their own tactics against them, using their proximity to its advantage. As more Zathran ships were destroyed, panic set in once again. The human warship's ability to absorb energy and convert it into an unstoppable offensive force was unlike anything they had faced before. No matter how much firepower they brought to bear, it seemed only to make the human ships stronger. Their long-range bombardment, which had been designed to weaken the human defenses, was now fueling the very thing they were trying to destroy. The Zathran commanders, now faced with the reality of another catastrophic defeat, ordered a retreat. Their once grand armada, assembled to erase the memory of their earlier humiliation, was in shambles. Ships scattered, some fleeing in random directions, others trying desperately to regroup in a futile effort to salvage what was left of their forces. But the human warship was relentless, cutting down retreating vessels with the same cold precision that had defined the entire battle. In the end, the second Zathran fleet fared no better than the first. Their ships, designed for overwhelming frontal assaults and precision strikes, were no match for the human warship's adaptive strategy. What they had initially seen as a relic had now obliterated not one, but two of their most powerful fleets. The Zathran Confederacy, once feared and respected across the galaxy, had been brought to its knees by a single human vessel. As the remaining Zathan ships limped back to their home systems, the rest of the galaxy watched in stunned silence. The narrative had shifted. Humanity, long mocked for its supposed technological inferiority, had proven itself to be a force far more dangerous than anyone had anticipated. The footage of the second battle spread quickly, reaching every corner of the galaxy. Analysts, strategists, and military leaders from other alien species reviewed the data, all coming to the same conclusion, the Zathran Confederacy had made a fatal mistake in underestimating humanity. For the Zathrans, this second defeat was more than a military loss. It was a blow to their pride, their standing, and their future. They had been the ones to mock humanity, to make them a laughingstock across the galaxy. Now, the joke was on them. The remnants of their fleet would serve as a grim reminder that the days of mocking human technology were over. The aftermath of the Zathran Confederacy's second defeat was felt across the galaxy. What had started as mockery and arrogance had ended in devastation and humiliation. The once mighty Zathran forces, known for their ruthless efficiency and technological superiority, had been brought low by a single human warship. Their confidence shattered, the surviving Zathran leadership faced a sobering reality. They were no longer the dominant power they once believed themselves to be. Word of the Zathran's defeat spread like wildfire. The footage of the human warship dismantling not one, but two of the Confederacy's fleets, became the most discussed event in galactic history. Species that had once dismissed humanity as a non-threat were now scrambling to understand what had happened. How could a species so long considered technologically inferior suddenly possess a weapon capable of destroying one of the most advanced military powers in the galaxy? The galactic community, now acutely aware of humanity's unexpected rise in military prowess, reacted in various ways. Some sought to distance themselves from the Zathrans, who had once led with arrogance but were now reduced to a cautionary tale. Alliances that had seemed unshakable crumbled overnight as former Zathran allies questioned their ability to protect themselves against this new human threat. No one wanted to be associated with failure, and the Zathrans had become the epitome of it. Meanwhile, humanity's position in the galaxy changed dramatically. No longer seen as the underdogs, they were now a force to be reckoned with, and everyone knew it. Diplomatic channels opened between human leaders and other alien species, many of whom sought alliances or at least assurances that humanity would not turn its newfound power against them. After witnessing the destruction of the Zathran fleets, no one wanted to make the same mistake. The human government, 
aware of the seismic shift in their standing, played their cards carefully. They had achieved what no one had expected, and they knew the galaxy was watching their every move. Rather than boast or flaunt their victory, humanity adopted a posture of quiet strength. They made it clear that they had no desire for galactic domination, but they also sent an unmistakable message. They would not be mocked, underestimated, or threatened ever again. For the Zathran Confederacy, the consequences of their underestimation were far more severe. Their leadership, once bloated with pride and confidence, now faced rebellion and internal strife. Their territories, once tightly controlled, began to fracture as splinter factions rose up, seeking to distance themselves from the Confederacy's failures. The Zathran military, once the backbone of their empire, was in disarray, with surviving commanders struggling to maintain control of their fractured forces. Entire sectors broke away from Zathran control, either declaring independence or aligning with rival powers, leaving the once mighty empire teetering on the brink of collapse. The Zathran people, who had been raised on tales of their military supremacy, now grappled with the reality of their defeat. The propaganda that had once filled their screens, portraying humanity as weak and insignificant, had turned into a bitter reminder of their leader's arrogance. Protests erupted in major Zathran cities, with citizens demanding accountability for the disaster that had befallen their empire. The once unshakable pride of the Zathran people had been replaced with a deep sense of shame and uncertainty about their future. In contrast, humanity's victory became a symbol of resilience, ingenuity, and the dangers of underestimation. The human worship that had once been mocked as useless was now revered as the ultimate example of strategic deception. Analysts across the galaxy poured over the battle footage, trying to understand how humanity had developed such advanced technology without the rest of the galaxy noticing. The photon-based weapons, the energy-absorbing shields, these were no longer viewed as flukes or anomalies. They were seen as the hallmarks of a civilization that had quietly evolved into something far more dangerous than anyone had realized. The lesson was clear. Humanity had been underestimated for too long and the consequences of that underestimation had been catastrophic for those who dared to mock them. What had started as a simple encounter, a chance for the Zathran Confederacy to flex its military might and remind the galaxy of its dominance, had turned into a galactic turning point. The old power structures were shifting, and at the center of this change stood humanity, once the underdogs, now a force to be respected and for many feared. For other alien species, the fall of the Zathrans served as a stark warning. It was no longer acceptable to view humanity as a species of limited potential. Their technological prowess, once hidden, had revealed itself in devastating fashion. The galaxy's great powers, many of whom had their own designs for expansion, now had to reconsider their plans. If the Zathran fleets could be annihilated so thoroughly, what hope did they have of standing against humanity's newfound might? In the aftermath of the battle, the human warship returned to its home systems, greeted not with the pomp and fanfare of a conquering force, but with quiet acknowledgement of its achievement. Humanity had proven itself on the galactic stage, but it had done so without seeking unnecessary glory. There was no need for boasting, their actions had spoken louder than any words could. The galaxy now knew what they were capable of, and that was enough. As the galaxy recalibrated to this new reality, the question on everyone's mind was the same. What would humanity do next? They had demonstrated their strength, but their long-term intentions remained unclear. Some feared that humanity, emboldened by its victories, might begin to assert itself as a dominant power. Others believed that humanity, having proven its point, would retreat back to its corner of the galaxy, content with the knowledge that they were no longer seen as weak. The truth, as always, lay somewhere in between. Humanity had no grand designs on galactic conquests, but they also had no intention of allowing themselves to be underestimated again. Their victory over the Zathran Confederacy was not just a military triumph, it was a declaration of their place in the galaxy. They had earned their respect the hard way, and they would not relinquish it. For the Zathrans, the road to recovery, if it ever came, would be long and uncertain. Their mockery of humanity had cost them dearly, and now, their empire lay in ruins, their fleets destroyed, 
and their reputation in tatters. What once had been a symbol of galactic power was now a cautionary tale. And as the dust settled, the rest of the galaxy looked on, reminded of a simple, undeniable truth, never underestimate humanity.